In the beginning of 2022, I challenged myself to create 100 scene studies from some of my favorite movies, TV shows, YouTube channels, you name it. It began as a bit of a pipe dream, really. I didn't actually anticipate making it past the first 20 scene studies, honestly. But armed with uncharacteristically high motivation and honestly pretty low expectations, I embarked on a journey that would change the entire course of my artistic career. So today I present to you my ultimate sketchbook tour. This challenge spread across three sketchbooks, as well as a few sheets of loose leaf watercolor paper. So without further ado, let's take a look. Now I did share the first few themes of the challenge in my previous sketchbook tour. So if you're not interested in seeing those again, just skip to this timestamp. However, I think it's pretty interesting to see the kind of the progression from beginning to end. So I'd encourage you to just watch the whole thing. Anyways, let's begin. Our journey begins with the watching in wonder theme. Now, when I first started the challenge, I wasn't really planning on doing actual themes. But for the first five scene studies, I kind of noticed a bit of a pattern in the scenes that I was choosing, so I decided that making every five scenes a new theme would keep me interested in the challenge and help me not get burnt out so quickly. And it would also give me a sense of direction on which scenes I wanted to choose. So first up, we have Ratatouille. This little scene of Remy looking out over the city of Paris just absolutely captures my attention every single time I watch the movie. We've got a little scene from Wrong Gone Wrong, a scene of Rapunzel looking out over the lanterns, over the pond, and a little scene from The Wizard of Oz. One of the things that's most interesting to me throughout this challenge is the progression of using um, cheaper <laughs> gouache paints to using more professional, just better quality gouache. So like in this first one, you can kind of see over in here where there's a bit of a glare from using kind of a a more almost waxy kind of black gouache. Later on in the challenge, I started to use more of my Winsor & Newton gouache, which has more of that kind of classic matte velvety gouache finish to it. To finish out the wonder theme, we have a scene from Coco. Now this scene, oh my goodness, I freaking love this scene. The colors, the music, everything about it is just, it's so good. I love how there's kind of this cool light hitting on top and then like a warm light coming up from the marigolds on the bridge. Ah, oh, so pretty. Next up, we had a facial expressions theme. Now, honestly, <laughs> this study didn't go super fantastic. Um, Julie Andrews ended up with a little bit of a whale nose. It was a whole thing and we don't want to, we don't need to talk about it. Now this one has a very, very special place in my heart. For one, the scene just absolutely enamored me the first time I watched the movie. I love this very soft light from the lamp and just the very peaceful kind of melancholic expression on Ian's face. But this piece also has a very special place in my heart because Pixar actually shared this piece on their Instagram page. I'm not gonna lie, kind of almost peed my pants that day. It was very exciting. <laughs> As you probably know by now, Pixar is one of my favorite animation studios. I absolutely adore their movies. They're so true to life. So just very genuine. Next up is a scene from Pretty Woman. Now this scene is by far my favorite in the movie. I love Julia Roberts. Just, <sighs> she's just iconic. I mean, for one, her fluffy red hair in the movie is beautiful, but the absolute like snark on her face as she says, Big mistake. Huge. I have to go shopping now. She's such an iconic character and I definitely knew I had to paint this scene for the expressions theme. For this facial expression scene study, I really wanted to use a vertical format for it so I could kind of zoom in on the character's expression. If you haven't seen the movie Dan in real life, you definitely should. Absolutely hilarious. To finish out the expressions theme, we have another Coco scene. I did have to bring in a little bit of colored pencil on his face because like I said, I was using pretty cheap gouache in these first few themes and they definitely, <laughs> the colors got a little bit muddy and it, it was a deal, but it's okay. One of the things that's kind of interesting to look back on throughout these is how the gouache kind of reactivated a little bit in some areas and made little smudgies on my paintings, which, you know, I guess it just adds a little bit of rawness to it that's kind of fun. So next up was the architecture theme. We have Rapunzel's Tower from Tangled, we've got Minas Tirith from Return of the King, we have a lovely little scene from Song of the Sea, 
I will never stop ranting and raving about how much I love Cartoon Saloon's design aesthetic. All these little graphic elements on like the clouds and the rocks, all of the cool little trees. <sighs> I love Cartoon Saloon. They just, they're, they're amazing. Next up, we have Haunted Mansion and Spirited Away to finish out the architecture theme. I wasn't super proud of how this one turned out. Um, I think it was just a little bit dull and definitely a little bit of a wonky perspective, but you know, that's how we learn. I was definitely a lot happier with how the Spirited Away scene turned out. And next up is our food theme. Of course, you can't do a food theme without a scene from Ratatouille. And this one from Little Forest, which if you haven't seen that movie, you definitely should. It's amazing. So many aesthetic food scenes and cooking scenes. It's, it's, it's lovely. All the wonderful cottagecore vibes. We've got another scene from Spirited Away. Again, you can kind of see where the little smudgies happened from the opposite page. Now this one was probably my favorite from the food theme. I absolutely loved bringing out my dip pen, of course. I really love the inky, kind of sketchy quality of Aristocats. I mean, honestly, any classic Disney movie in general is just... And if you didn't want that little Ritz cracker with creme de la creme a la Edgar on it when you were a little kid, you're lying. To finish out the food theme, we have a scene from Lady and the Tramp. At the time, I wasn't super happy with how this one turned out. I wasn't very confident in my line work, but honestly, now that I look back on it, I don't really think it looks all that bad, you know? Sometimes it helps to kind of just take a few months and not look at something, and then you can kind of come back to it and realize that, you know, maybe it wasn't that bad in the first place. Next up, we have our animals theme. Let's just ignore the bike over here and pay attention to little Max. We've got a scene from the highly underrated movie, Epic, with Mub and Grub. Another little inky Winnie the Pooh scene. Of course, we also had to do the Lion King for the animals theme. I really loved using this kind of dry brush technique for the moon and also playing around with a little bit of color vibration throughout the tree. To finish out the animal theme, I loved painting this scene from Wolf Walkers. Again, I got to bring out my dip pen, which is always very exciting. Next up, we have our trees theme. I really love this pink kind of blossom tree from the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. And I love the way the sun's kind of shining through the mountains and casting this really nice glow over the whole scene. As you can probably tell, I had no idea how I was supposed to paint clouds at this time. So, next up, we have another Lion King scene. Now I was really excited to do this one because there's a lot of there's a lot of bounce light from this kind of reddish ground up into the bark of the tree. It mixes with the sky blue and creates this really interesting purple on the side of the tree. We have a scene from The Princess and the Frog of Mama Odie's boathouse and a lovely little night scene from The Lorax. So I really wanted to paint Fingorn Forest for the trees theme. I mean, let's be honest, it's probably one of the most iconic forests in all of cinematic history. And I really had a lot of fun just kind of playing around with the colors in this one, trying to simplify the background and my plant shapes. But I definitely had a lot of fun with all of these little warmer green elements up against these kind of soft purples and lighter blues. This was definitely one of my favorite scene studies. Next up, we have our libraries theme. Of course, we couldn't do a library theme without the iconic Ghostbusters. It was really fun kind of painting this transparent skirt of the librarian's dress, kind of simplifying all these book shapes and playing around with the kind of blue to warmer red gradient on the flooring. We have another Dark Crystal Age of Resistance scene. This one didn't turn out <laughs> quite how I wanted it to, but you know, it's okay. The goal of the challenge was not perfection, it was to grow, and every scene study got me a little closer. We have a scene from Beauty and the Beast, as well as a scene from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This one was definitely one of my favorites out of this theme. I really enjoyed laying down these dark shapes and then kind of pulling out the form of the different objects by bringing in some highlights and some different color variations, like this little globe here, the spines of the books. And we have another little loose leaf study for this theme. We couldn't do a library theme without our favorite librarian, Evie. 
Next up, we have our creatures theme. As many of you know, Lilo and Stitch is my all time favorite Disney movie. I definitely knew I wanted to recreate one of my favorite scenes. I think for this one, I ended up combining two different scenes because I loved the way Stitch's tongue was hanging out in one scene, but I loved the expression on Polikli's face in the other scene. So, you know, kind of mishmashed them together. Next up, we have the Komoribi from Princess Mononoke. I hadn't actually watched the movie when I painted this one, so I didn't really know what these creatures were, but they're so cute. I just, I wanted to paint them. And I loved all the little plant shapes in the background. Next up, we have a scene from Hilda of the woodsman and of course, a little twig on the couch back here. We have a scene of Balrog and Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. I think this is another one that I played around a little bit with picking two different scenes and mixing them together. I wanted Gandalf's staff to be up, but I also wanted the Balrog's kind of arms outstretched kind of pose. And to finish out the creature's theme, we have a little scene of Toothless and Hiccup from How to Train Your Dragon. We have now approached probably my favorite theme of the entire challenge, the background theme. I think this is really what awakened my love of painting backgrounds. I've always been a huge fan of clutter core. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it after this one. Super fun. So I chose some of probably the most complicated scenes I could have picked for this theme. I guess I had a little bit of a death wish apparently. <laughs> Each of these scenes took me so, so long to paint. But it was worth it because I liked how all of them turned out. So first up is a scene from Luca. I loved the little record player in this one and the little stuffed animal, all the little records and books on the floor. We've got a scene from Howl's Moving Castle of Howl's extremely cluttered bathroom. My perspective skills are obviously not up to snuff in this one, but you know, like I said, every scene study brings us a little bit closer. We've got Andy and Molly's room from Toy Story. This one I definitely had to bring in some colored pencils because I hadn't really <laughs> hadn't really mapped out my values and colors very well, especially with the with the shine on the floor. And by the time I was getting close to finishing this one, it was probably most of the day was already gone and I just didn't have the patience for paint anymore. We have Carl and Ellie's chairs from the movie Up. Sadly, this one has some of those little paint splotches that got reactivated from the other page. <laughs> but I actually really, really like how this scene turned out. I love the shadows and the kind of warm glow from the window. For the background's theme, I knew I wanted to do the inside of the Owl Witch's Hut from Song of the Sea. Again, I absolutely love their design aesthetic and the kind of <laughs> lack of regard for the rules of perspective. <laughs> There's not really much depth to the flooring and I, I don't know, I find that really interesting but I loved all the little bottles and the little marks on the tree. Super, super fun. The final theme for this sketchbook was the dance theme. Our first scene is from Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium, where Mr. Megorium is dancing on the bubble wrap in the park. I was very not happy with how Mahoney turned out, but the rest of the scene, I, I was pretty excited with. I had just discovered JC Leindecker at this point, so I was kind of trying to mimic his use of shadow shapes and highlights in the clothing. Next up is a scene of Lilo and Stitch from, you guessed it, Lilo and Stitch. Honestly, I think I had way more fun with the background, this kind of watercolory elements versus the actual, you know, characters. But throughout this challenge, I discovered that that was going to be the case through most of the themes. So for the next two scenes, we have to flip back through the sketchbook to a page that had previously not been filled. So we have the iconic dance scene from Labyrinth. Again, I was playing around with a little bit of JC Leindecker-esque shapes. Please understand I am not in any way, shape or form putting myself on par with his skills. I mean, clearly <laughs> we're nowhere near the same level, but you know, practice makes progress. I believe I did this scene from La La Land on the same day. My sister was getting ready to move and I needed to get another scene study cranked out so that we could, you know, so we could spend a little bit more time together before she left. So this one definitely has a lot more just kind of simplified shapes, just trying to capture the essence of the scene without too much detail. And moving on to the final 50, we have the Pentalic Aqua Journal. This sketchbook changed the game. 
for my scene studies. I realized that I really enjoyed painting on the loose leaf papers and I couldn't figure out why that was until I realized I prefer painting with gouache on cold press paper. Which is not generally typical for most gouache artists, I feel like. I think a lot more people enjoy painting on smoother paper, but for me, I don't know. I just really like the texture. I think I can get a lot more variation in my brush strokes with it. And I feel like the texture of the paper actually helps me blend my paints a little bit better. So anyways, first up is the train scene. We have a scene from the movie Inside Out. I was definitely a little bit nervous to try to paint on this paper. After this first scene, I was absolutely in love. I also started really paying more attention to which gouache I was using and trying to use more of my nicer, higher quality gouache, which definitely made a difference. We have a train from the Aristocats. The line work got a little bit sloppy in this one. I did start to realize that ink over gouache will reactivate the gouache. So you either have to work really, really quickly or be prepared to make some mistakes. We have the train chase scene from Indiana Jones. Of course, we couldn't have a train scene without the one and only Hogwarts Express. Again, I really liked bringing out the form on the train with all of the little highlights on top of my shadow shapes. And to finish out the train's theme, we have a scene from Zootopia. Next up was the cottage theme. Now this was definitely another one of my favorites. Um, if you know me at all, <laughs> you know I am a sucker for cottages. Anything cottage core, just those cozy vibes, it gives me the tangles. But I have zero idea of how to actually draw and paint them. So I decided that I wanted to do a cottage theme. We painted a lot of Disney cottages for this one. Disney just has very iconic homes in their movies, especially in classic Disney movies. So first up, we have Sleeping Beauty's Cottage from Sleeping Beauty. This was my first foray into the wonderful work of Ivan Earl. If you don't know who Ivan Earl is, you should definitely check out the video where I painted this scene. I go full into the nerdistry behind Ivan Earl. Long story short, he's brilliant. Next up is Belle's Cottage from Beauty and the Beast. I really love the over-exaggerated um, shadow colors. They're very highly saturated and just very interesting to look at, especially compared with this very yellow peachy kind of sky. This scene was also around the time that I had gotten a larger set of Windsor & Newton gouache, which had a warm red. Now this set of gouache kind of changed the game for my scene studies. One of my biggest takeaways from this challenge was color mixing. There are two art fundamentals that entirely confuse me if I think about them literally at all, and those are perspective and color theory. I make it infinitely harder than it needs to be. I feel like I've gained kind of a decent grasp on both of these things throughout the year to where I can use them more intuitively, but if I start to think about the mathematics behind perspective or the color wheel literally at all, I, I kind of wig out a little bit. But y'all, this challenge has been a game changer for my color theory. One of the questions I get asked most often is how I learned color theory and how I can mix colors relatively cleanly. And honestly, a good 75% of that is due to this challenge. Not only did it teach me how to look at a reference and mix what I'm seeing by observing color temperature and subtle value shifts, what blues I should mix with which yellow to get this green, it ultimately taught me that if you want to learn something, you just have to practice it over and over and over and over again. There's definitely no easy way to learn art. You can't just read an art book or hear an art lecture and be like, oh yes, I understand the universe now. No, you have to take the head knowledge and put it into practice. And ultimately it comes back to failing. You know, sometimes my colors ended up muddy beyond repair. Sometimes I had to use those colored pencils to shift a color because I just couldn't seem to mix the right one. It took me literally over half of the challenge to figure out that I needed to purchase this warmer red because the one I had was too cool for some of the mixes that I needed to do. Anyways, moving on. Next up, we have Bilbo's Hobbit Hole from, I think this one's actually from The Hobbit, not from Lord of the Rings. I just really liked the vibrancy of the colors in this reference photo. We also have Zaniba's Hut from Spirited Away. 
I know I say this about a lot of the Studio Ghibli scene studies, but this one, this one's one of my favorites for sure. There's just so many little details and I just, I love, I love her cottage. It's so aesthetically pleasing. And to finish out the cottage theme, we have Snow White's cottage from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I really love the shape language. We have all of these little curves mixed with the straights. Very exciting. Next up, we have our market theme. Now this is one of the ones I think I showed in my beginner's guide to getting started with gouache series. So if you're looking to get into gouache, I highly recommend you check out that playlist. I'll leave a link down in the description. So we've got a scene from Lilo and Stitch. Now this scene's kind of obscure. It's from the end credits, but it's so, so funny. Basically, Stitch is sucking on a lollipop and this little baby is sucking on a bottle of milk. They see each other's stuff and decide to trade. Next up, we have Letty's shop from Howl's Moving Castle. Now this one I was definitely trying to play around with simplifying all of this crowd of suitors. I really enjoyed playing around with the brush strokes on the hair, just kind of trying to describe the form without getting into really any kind of detail at all. But I think the gumball machine and this little kind of table-y thing, those were my favorite. Next up is a scene from Pride and Prejudice. Not the Pride and Prejudice you're probably thinking of. This is like a 2004, 2006 version. I'm not sure. It's like a modern take on Pride and Prejudice. Extremely funny, objectively not good, but I love it anyways. Once again, I was kind of in a little bit of a hurry this day, so I just tried to block in all of my shapes and shadows and describe the scene without going into too much detail. Next up, we have another Zootopia scene. This one was really interesting because it has this very cool light in the foreground, but a lot of brighter, warmer light in the background, and it creates this really nice contrast that was really, really fun to play around with. And of course, I love painting all the little foods and the chalkboard sign. I am a sucker for chalkboard signs. And to finish out the shop's theme, we have a scene from Kiki's Delivery Service. This is one I definitely played around a little bit more with adding some of my own elements to it. All of these breads in the background were more just kind of 2D cell shading style, but I really wanted to bring in some textures, some interesting shadows and highlights, playing around with how purple would look in the shadows or blues, how greens would look in the shadows too. Also in rendering out some of the forms just a little bit more, this challenge definitely taught me how to start adding my own spin on things. In the beginning of the challenge, I wanted to recreate the scenes as accurately as I could. I mean, I'm talking color for color, stroke for stroke, but at about 50% of the way through, I started to get a little bit more playful. I started exaggerating colors or simplifying shapes, attempting to paint the scene in the kind of the style of JC Leindecker or discovering what a scene from a live action movie would look like in the style of Studio Ghibli. I learned how master artists like Disney's Ivan Earl painted trees, or how Caswell Oga painted landscapes, how Cartoon Saloon uses graphic elements and textures to give their films this really unique design aesthetic. By studying so much from so many movies and shows, I was learning the secrets and techniques of hundreds of artists who'd worked together on all of these different projects. And I began to use and to adapt some of those techniques to my own pieces, kind of becoming an amalgamation of so many different masters. Of course, I am nowhere near their level, but it was absolutely humbling to get to learn from so many amazing artists. Next up, we have the skies theme. I had to think about that one for a second. I wasn't sure which one this was. So I've always loved this scene from Luca where Julia is walking across the rooftops in front of the moon. Of course, there's a lot of really fun colors in here, but I also love that she has this kind of almost Charlie Brown kind of peanuts silhouette to her. This one was really, really fun to paint. Next up, we have a scene from Howl's Moving Castle. Now this one, I definitely struggled on the sky. Um, I didn't wet my paper enough, so I wasn't really getting those nice gradients and blends that I was hoping to, but I definitely had a lot of fun on the rocks in the foreground. There's a lot of very vibrant shadows and warm highlights, lots of little textural elements that were really, really exciting to paint. Next up, we've got a scene from Avatar The Last Airbender. I was really disappointed because I got some little white splotches on Appa's shadows, but thankfully it's nothing I can't go back and fix at some point if I so choose to. For this one, I got really, really playful with using 
like an old um, fluffy makeup brush for getting this kind of feathery effect around the moon. I also had a lot of fun playing with some little splattery techniques for the stars. Next up is a lovely little scene from Brother Bear. This movie is so entirely underrated, I had completely forgotten it existed, but oh my goodness. For one, the story is just incredible, but for two, I mean, the backgrounds. Guys, the backgrounds. I was really excited about this one because I got to learn a little bit more about color mixing and using like an ultramarine blue versus a primary blue. It's this very rich royal kind of purple. Also, I was very excited with how the clouds turned out for this one. And to finish out our skies theme, we have a scene from Spirited Away. Now this was my first and only double page spread for the challenge. Y'all, this was probably the most stressful <laughs> scene to paint. I had the worst time mixing the color for the sky. Oh my goodness. It was not a good time. I was very excited with how the clouds turned out. That was not the issue, surprisingly, for this one. But oh my, the sky. Anyways, I ended up kind of doing this almost Van Gogh brush stroke kind of technique because I was like, you know what? My sky is not turning out one solid blue anyways. So let's just, let's just go with it and make it look intentional. So we added some of these like darker blues. We added some lighter blues, got into a little bit of like greenish in here. Once again, I decided that I didn't really want to do the kind of cell shading style of the movie, which didn't really end up working out to my advantage, but you know, it's okay. It was an experiment and you know, I learned some stuff. So next up we have our sweets theme. I realized that I hadn't done a cloudy with a chance of meatball scene for the food theme, which seemed like an absolute travesty. So, of course, we had to do another food theme. This was definitely a fun one. Um, once again, if you know me at all, I am an ice cream fanatic. Seriously, I am 100% convinced that ice cream is my soulmate. So, it was really fun playing around with these kind of dry brush techniques for getting that grittier ice cream texture on the scoops. Here we have another Princess and the Frog scene study. I was always obsessed with the beignets in this movie, so I definitely knew I wanted to paint them. And next up, we have our first foray into mini scene studies. This came about because I was getting extremely busy in other areas of my career, and I was also getting a little bit burnt out on the scene studies, so I decided to start doing some smaller ones. We have the candy shop from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, which was probably the worst scene I could have chosen to paint first as a mini. <laughs> There's so many tiny little elements and it took me a lot longer than I would like to admit. Next up is a scene of Maria eating the cookie from Secret of Moonacre. I also wanted to do a scene from Disney's Alice in Wonderland of all the cute little cookies. And next up we have our plants theme. So this first study, I don't know if I've actually posted this one anywhere. I don't think I did. It's a little scene from Frozen 2 where they're stepping into the forest. I just, I love all of these purples and reds. It's a very, very, very pretty scene. Next, we have a scene from this beautiful Fantastic. This one was very interesting because it is a live action film. I really wanted to play around with trying to make it look kind of more Studio Ghibli-esque. So it was really fun playing around with the different plant shapes and trying to group elements together to give a clear read of like the greenhouse, but also to, to have a little bit of fun with all the plants. Here we have a scene from The Legend of Korra where the spirit vines are kind of overtaking the city. This one I admittedly did not take a lot of time on, which you can probably tell from the perspective. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little wonky, but you know. A lot of these mini scenes I only had between like an hour or two to work on them. So I was trying to get things done as quickly as I could. Next up for the plants theme, we have a scene from The Secret World of Arietti. Now I just watched this movie for the first time in September and oh my goodness, so aesthetically pleasing. I'm such a fan. I really had fun kind of getting to know all of the little plant shapes, especially in the foreground. There's so many different elements 
And of course, I love the Japanese architecture. Oh, so fun. And to finish out the plants theme, we have a scene of Rabbit's Garden from Winnie the Pooh. Of course, I loved bringing out my ink pen again and kind of playing around with gouache in a more watercolory kind of way. And our next theme is the spooky theme. I did this little study from Scooby-Doo Zombie Island, which is my favorite Scooby-Doo movie, 10 out of 10. I also watched Coraline for the first time this year, and I really loved this scene of her kind of crawling through the tunnel into, I'm totally blanking on the, what the world's called, the other world, I guess, I don't know. Whenever she's crawling through the tunnel, that scene, I there's a lot of fun colors, so I wanted to paint it. Here we have a scene from the box trolls. And of course, I couldn't do a spooky theme without Nightmare Before Christmas. This one was a ton of fun. I played around with lots of splattery textures. Also a little bit of more of a tiling technique for like the pumpkins in the foreground. Just laying down the paints next to each other without really letting them, without really letting them blend too much. To finish out the spooky slash monsters theme, we have a scene from Monsters University. From the beginning of this challenge, I knew I needed to paint a scene study from Monsters University because the lighting and color in this movie is absolutely incredible. Robert Kondo and Dai Susumi did an amazing job with this movie. I'm obsessed. And over here, we have our homes theme. We've got Cusco's Castle from Emperor's New Groove, Nemo's Anemone from Finding Nemo, and Downton Abbey from Downton Abbey. We have Madame's Mansion from Aristocats. Now this one didn't turn out quite like I wanted it to. It turned out a little bit more <laughs> chunky <laughs> than the original kind of sketchy design of the movie. But the reference photo I found was very small and kind of blurry, so I couldn't really tell what was going on in some areas. So, you know, I, I, I kind of just want it. And to finish out the homes theme, we have another Song of the Sea study. I absolutely love the lighthouse in this movie, and I really wanted to paint all those fun shapes on the rocks and stuff, so I was like, you know, we can fit this in the homes theme, it counts. And next up, we have our creators theme. So this scene study is from one of my all-time favorite Team Edge episodes on YouTube, the Who Will Survive the Collapsing Path Challenge. It's got this very Indiana Jones aesthetic, and this scene in particular was very kind of tricky to try to capture because there's this cool light in the background, but there's all these red lights that are casting a very monochromatic cue over the entire scene. But it was really super fun, and I had a blast painting it. Next up is a little scene from, I think it's her 86M? 8M6? I don't know, I'll put the username up there. But she has these very aesthetically pleasing vlogs, lots of very cozy cottagecore vibes, and I really wanted to paint her garden. Next up, we have the one and only Rachel Maxi. So, so fun. She has this very vibrant personality, and I adore watching her videos. Who's my favorite comedian? Great question, I would love to tell you. The one and only Elise Myers. Again, I really had fun playing around with these kind of chunky highlight shapes for her hair and for her sweater. She has such a fun personality. I love her podcast. I love her videos on Instagram. So, so cool. And to finish out the creator's theme, we have Katherine Manning. When I saw this reel on her Instagram, I absolutely knew I had to paint it. For one, she just has this kind of Kim Possible aesthetic going on and I'm, I'm here for it. It's great. I love her and her sister's show, The Uncomfortable Pants Podcast. So funny. And she has so many wonderful tips about starting a YouTube channel. She was actually one of the first creators that I started watching when I was thinking about starting my own channel. And so many of her tips have truly changed my YouTube career. We are now approaching the final theme, the Studio Ghibli theme. This scene has always been one of my favorites from Spirited Away. It's so peaceful and has this very kind of melancholic vibe to it. I love the lighting. I love the leaves. Everything about this scene is just so visually appealing. and I had a blast painting it. Next up, we have the giant from Castle in the Sky. This was another one that I had a lot of fun just observing the different textures that they used for the moss covering the giant. I also had fun with these kind of streaky 
sunbeams in the background. I've always struggled with sunbeams because I really just don't know how to paint them in gouache, but I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of it a little bit. I also really like this butterfly, <laughs> he's really cute. Next up is the gazebo from Porcaroso. There's so much fun plant life in this one and I was really excited to get to it. But I was definitely nervous for painting the gazebo rooftop. I really struggle with warmer reds and kind of orangey color mixes. And I was a little concerned going into this one, but I think it, I think it actually turned out pretty decent. So I was very excited. This scene study actually came next. Actually, hold up. I think it was, so I painted this one first, this one second, I think this one third, maybe it was this one third, I don't know. Either way, I there was a reason I didn't go in order on the pages and I'm not, I'm not gonna bore you with the details, it's fine. Anyways, this one, Princess Mononoke. I really wanted to paint the deer god. He has this really interesting like antler shape, tree textures and plant textures in the foreground. This one definitely took me a lot of layering. I worked a lot background to foreground to kind of to kind of figure out how I wanted to layer things. But yeah, there's a lot of really fun shadow colors, lots of little mushrooms and leaves. I also really liked this kind of warmer blue glow on this side of the tree. And to finish out the Ghibli theme, as well as the entire 100 Scene Studies Challenge, we have a scene from my neighbor Totoro. This was definitely a little bit bittersweet to paint, I'm gonna be 100% honest, I didn't even think about the fact that this was the final scene study until like later on in the day. We were planning this little impromptu weekend vacation and my mind was apparently just not present. But I feel like this scene was very fitting to finish out the theme. We have this little parked bike outside of this little entryway into the forest. It feels like it's kind of the end of a journey and the beginning of a new one. and. It seemed like the perfect way to finish out the challenge. Now this is not a hard and fast rule for artists, but it's definitely one that changed things for me. To be a good painter, you need to have good drawing skills. If your sketch is sloppy, chances are your painting is gonna be pretty sloppy too. Now this challenge really taught me the value of learning to accurately sketch what I'm seeing. Are there still things I struggle to draw sometimes? Sure, no one's perfect. But for the most part, I don't really find anything impossible for me to accurately sketch. This challenge taught me how to draw buildings, how to repaint characters that are identifiable as that character. But to set my painting up for success, I need to take the time to sketch it right. Now, the most important thing that this challenge taught me is to not be afraid to fail. I've always been a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to my art, especially art that I know I'll be showing to other people, but this challenge really taught me to show up every day with a willingness to fail and the understanding that failure is a very necessary part of growth. Every failure taught me something new and I definitely would not be the artist I am today without it. It taught me to be willing to fail in my studies and to be willing to fail in my personal illustrations. I can show up to my sketchbook and not be too terribly discouraged when I mess up a sketch because it does happen. I just acknowledge it, try to observe what went wrong, and try again. I think if you're trying to learn a medium or to study color and light, this challenge would be invaluable for you. It's truly taught me so, so much and definitely furthered my creative practice and career in ways that I never even dreamed of. Thank you so, so much for coming along with me on this journey. I am infinitely grateful to all of you who've cheered me on and inspired me along the way. I'll still be sharing the painting process for the scenes that aren't uploaded yet, so definitely be on the lookout for those. Huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon for helping to support me in my art journey. Y'all are the best. If you're interested in joining the crew over on Patreon, January 2023 is literally the perfect time. I'm revamping how I'm organizing my subscriptions. It's all going to be a pay what you want system. All patrons will be receiving the exact same rewards, such as work in progress pieces, tutorials, exclusive sketches, Q and A's, phone wallpapers, exclusive shop discounts, and more. I really want everyone to be able to be a part of our community at whatever amount they can afford. So if you're interested in joining us, head on over to Patreon via the link in the video description. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. 2023 is coming and with it, a lot of exciting new videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.
What does this say? I can't read it. I can't read it. I don't have my glasses. 